So the next thing that I wanted to show that we get a lot of requests for is how you create a simple date parameter and then how you show um, what dates the user actually selected. So I'm going to use a file that hopefully everyone is familiar with um, in sales order. So when we come to sales order, sales order entry, and we look at the orders that are actually in here, we're going to pull information from these orders in here. That's what we're going to pull in this report. Okay, so I'm going to create a new report. So I'm going to do File, New, using the Report Wizard here, because this is just the fastest way to do it. I'm going to, I can do this two ways. I can drill down to the table I want, or if you know the module, you can just start typing in here, and it will actually take you to that module. So, and like the old style ones where it's like I am one, you can actually type in I am one to go to the item master file. On all the new data dictionaries from 4.1 and above, they actually spelled the name out as opposed to using this three-digit code that they used to use. So it's actually now SO sales order header is the, type, is the field that we want. So this spelling out, this is the sales order header field. There's also sales order detail. The sales order detail in here would correspond to the line. Whenever it says detail on one of these files, it's always the lines they're talking about. Same thing for like purchase order, invoice entry, cash receipts entry, whatever. It's always talking about the lines. When it's detailed, it's the lines. The header is always usually the total address and header tab. All the information on these things are going to exist in the header. So we're going to use this table right here, the SO sales order header. And I'm just going to dump some fields out here. We'll take the sales order number, the order date, uh, date. We'll take the customer, and we'll take uh, We'll do the uh, taxable and non-taxable amount and sales tax. And we'll put free in here too. OK, and I'm going to say finish. So this shows me I currently have 31 records. So if I was to come back here and look in sales order entry, I have 31 records. So this is corresponding to the same table here. But maybe I didn't want to see all my records. Maybe I just wanted to see certain records that have a date of uh, uh, the month of May of this is dummy data, so May of 2010. I have some records in here that are May of 2010. So one way I can do it is under this select expert, under report select expert, I can come in here and say order date. And I can say is between. And I could type in 5-1-2010 and 5-31-2010. Okay. And I can say refresh data. Now I have 18 records because there's 18 records that fit this criteria. I'm going to go ahead and group these by order date. Um, so you can kind of see the dates that are in here. We have one that's 5-1, 5-3, 5-11, 5-14, all the way through the rest of the month. Now, this would be a report that I could create, but it's kind of limited because when I come back to run it, when I come to my select expert, it's only going to be in here. I could physically come in here and change it every time. But that could be, that's kind of a pain. And if a user doesn't know how to use Crystal, that's not very intuitive for them to do that. So one thing that we can do is we can create parameters. And it's here under this parameter field. And I'm going to click on New. And I'm just going to call this Date Range. And then I'm just going to say, enter a starting and ending date range. And the type of this, I'm going to change the date. And I'm going to change the value to a range. And I'm just going to say OK. So now I've created a parameter, but I actually haven't did anything with it. So if I go to refresh my report, it's just going to pull data. It's not actually doing anything. So I can come back to my report select expert, and I can change my is between to this day is equal to my parameter. Because I called my parameter a range, I can just assign it directly to it because it knows it's looking for a range. So now when I say OK, I actually get this uh, box. I'm sure you guys have all seen this before when you work with Crystal or you ran a report where it's asking you for a range of values. So I could change this to, I could enter whatever in here. I could say 5, 1, 2010. So maybe I'm going to run it through the end of the year. Let's say 12, 31, 2010. I'm going to say refresh date. Now I have 22 records when I do that. Maybe I want to just do it for a certain day. Maybe I only just want to run this for 5, 1 through 5, 1, 2010. Now I just have two records that meet the criteria. Now the one thing that a lot of times people ask is, well, that's great and all, but I can't tell what I ran my report for. So like, I don't know what dates I actually selected. Um, so one thing that we can do that we can use for a title, and I'm going to write the formula out here. And 
I know Trisha said that she's recording that, so you can you can see this or you can write it down as well. Is we can actually write a formula to get the date range out. So I can say for period, and if I just say for period and I just try to include my date range in here, it's going to tell me a string is required here. So I can change this to a string because it's currently a date. Two text will change something to a string. I'm applying a mask up. I want to show month, day, year. I can assign it like this, but the problem is it doesn't know what this date is because it's a range value. So what we do is we do this two text, kind of taking the minimum of it. Anytime you have a range, you can always take the minimum of that range parameter and the maximum. So when I do that, it tells me it compiled correctly. So when I go to preview, it says for period 5-1-2010. And then if I wanted the end, I just come in here. And we cover stuff like this in the uh, more intermediate class that we teach here as well. This is a little bit more advanced. I don't know where everyone level is at today at the thing, so I'm going to try to cover some advanced things and some very simple things as well. Okay. So this is minimum, and then I'm just, so I'm just saying string plus this is a string plus this is a string. So I'm saying I want the minimum of the date and the maximum of the date. So if I save and close this, now if I expand this all the way out, it's, I should probably put some more text in here so it doesn't all run into itself. I'll say two, and so now I have for period five one two thousand ten to five one two thousand ten. And if I go and I change this thing, I have to say prompt. Maybe I'm going to change this now to be seven one two thousand ten. Now it changes up here as well. So this enables the user to tell what they actually ran the report from. So that's uh, one way that we can do where we just took a simple report, we added a uh, date range to it, and then we gave them a way to display what they actually ran the report. So the last one we're going to deal with is the inventory master file. So the inventory master file in math is the main inventory maintenance. So they call it inventory master, but it's the same field here. It's all your items that you have in here. So when you're in inventory maintenance, all this data, in, if you're not on 4.4, if you're on 4.3 and before, like 4.1, 4.2, 4.3, it's actually IM1. As of 4.4, it's now called CI item. And so that's what the, the new table is in 4.4. Uh, but we're doing 4.3 here today. So. so I'm going to throw the item number, the description, the product line, um, and the product type in here. And I'm just going to say finish. So I have 112 items in here. So if I came back in here and I look, it tells me I have 112 records. So that's always a good way to tell you're looking at the right table is if the number of records that you have down here corresponds to the number of records that you expect to see, like in a lookup window in math, then you're definitely looking at the right table. So I'm going to say, to insert a simple group, there's a couple different ways you can do it. It's under insert group. You also have this uh, status bar down here, um, or it's an icon bar with little icons. You can say insert group. I'm going to choose product line. Um, you can do this in ascending, descending, uh, different couple ways you can do this. I'm just going to say in ascending order. So now I just grouped my fields off of um, off product line. I'm going to make this bold and a little bit bigger so I can tell what I'm looking at. And I'll make it, I'm going to change the color on it to red. So this is our group title. So these are, these are you'll notice that all the product lines that have C plus A show up here. All the Ds show up here. FDNA is here. PSNA is here. And WFNA is here on this page. So if for whatever reason, Maybe I only manufacture certain product lines in a certain area, or I have certain product lines that mean certain things. I can create a formula that represents that. So I'm going to just call this group. Oops, sorry, didn't mean to do that. Uh, group product line. Okay. So in here turn this thing off and I want to use the expert. I just click on this. This gets me back to here. I could say, I could just do product line. I can just build a product line in here, which is the exact same field that I actually already grouped on. It's looking at product line. But I could say, if, and I can always tell what's in one of my fields by right clicking on it and saying browse data. This will give you the first 200 instances of records in this field. 
So if you ever actually want to know like what's what's in a field that you're looking at, you can always just right click and choose browse data. And it also tells you how long the field is. So it tells me it's four characters. This field can never be more than four characters and it's a string. So as we go over in the intro class and in the intermediate class as well, we'll talk about the difference between strings and numbers and how you can do summations on numbers, but you can't do sums on a string. Um, how you can do averages on numbers but not on a string. Like what are some of the differences between strength numbers as well for like sorting purposes as well too. So these are my values here. So if I said if product line, um, and I'm just going to do the shorthand here. I'm going to look at some of the values. Say CA, and I'm going to browse again. And you can actually paste directly from here. DC. Uh, FD. PSA. Okay, now I got them all on the screen. I might say that these first two. If my product line is equal to these first two, then I'm going to create a group called Western. Maybe this is Western region. Else, if, and we'll go over uh, if if you've used these else ifs before or if then. This is another way you can do if then statements. Maybe if my product line is equal to um, these next two values, I'm going to put it in like so. I'm going to make this easier to read, so I'm going to indent it. Else if, and I'm, my product line is equal to this. So these are my five product lines. And this is just a list. That's all this is. With the bracket here and then the double quotes, this is looking for this string because this is what one of the product line is called. You can do a list. I could have a thousand, I could have a hundred items in here. I could have maybe a product line zero 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 if that's your product line, or maybe you have a product line zero one hundred, or you have a product line um, zero two hundred, or you have a product line A or whatever. You can just keep including values in here. Um, it doesn't actually have to physically exist in the database, but if you ever add a product line that meets one of these criteria, then it would show up in my self make. I need to define what I want to do. I'm going to say uh, central, ENTR, central region, and then I'm going to call this last one uh, then eastern region. Okay, and this probably has no meaning, but I, we've I've dealt with clients in the past where certain product lines are actually like a bigger product line, but there's no way in math to represent that. So we've written reports where we group product lines. It could be anything. It could be states. It could be anything that you need to have, like a certain GL code, certain GL codes that mean something. You can group them this way as well, too. Okay. And then all I need to do, if I ever wanted to change my group, is I just come over here to this, this group. I right-click on it. I say Change Group. And from the drop-down, I can include my formulas. Formulas are always this x plus 1. You'll notice this x plus 1 over here. This is always the formula. I click on that and say OK. And when I say Preview, now my product lines PS and A, BC, are my central region. My eastern was W, F, and A. And my western region here on the next page was F, D, and A, and C, and A. So now I just created a custom group off of a field. And so, like I said, you could use this for any type, like GL codes. Uh, it doesn't GL accounts, uh, customers. If you had certain customers that run a certain thing, product lines, whatever, you can do it with any field. So, so that's just a way that we create a simple group, and then we can create a more uh, probably a more detailed group as well.